from Israel, I am sent you to me. I am sent, I am has sent me to you, I should say. Moses, no, moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, excuse me, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. God, go and gather, I should say, go and gather the elders of the of Israel together and say to them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, appeared to me saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaans and the Hittites and the Amorites and the all the other names, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jeburcites. I can't read that either. To the land that flow with milk and honey. Then they will see your face and shall come and say, the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now please let us go, let my people go. Three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, but I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not even by a might, a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my, and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you. Sorry, this is a long passage. He'll let you go. 21, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty-handed. But, 22, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who, who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your shoe, on your sons, and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. So, with that being said, sorry for the misreading, because I can't, my reading level is not so great. So, Moses, so God basically appeared to Moses in a burning bush. Okay? So, as Moses was watching his father-in-law's sheep, on the other side of the desert, God, in a burning bush, spoke to Moses, telling him everything God had to say. This was ultim the ultimate divine appointment. Because, now, think about it this way. God told Moses what everything he's going to be doing. God said, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, blah, blah, blah. So when God said that to Moses, Moses goes, wait a minute, I don't speak well. I stammer, I stutter. Who, me? Who am I? What am I going to say? To them, when they ask me, who sent me? And he says, tell them, I am that I am. I am sent you. Therefore, Moses is being used. So God spoke to him and God wants to use Moses. But God spoke to him through a burning bush. Now, that was divine appointment. At that moment, God wanted Moses to go to that mountain and speak with him specifically. And so God had to do that through a burning bush. So when Moses went to that mountain to speak with God, at first his, brothers, his brother and sister were like, oh my God, there's something wrong with him. I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel sorry for him because anybody who's being approached by God like that knows, because they saw the burning bush, knows that God had something in store for, in store 
either they're doing something wrong or something was going on for God to be speaking to him. But as he came back, and as he came back, he says, look, I'm paraphrasing a little bit from the movie. He goes, look, he looks different. He's not just a man. He's being used by God, basically. So God had divine appointment to where he spoke to Moses. And Moses never knew this until right then and there. See, he got, he got, you know, as to say, as they say, the cat got loose out of the bag. He got curious there for a minute. And as they say, curiosity killed the cat, but he got curious. And he went, walked to that burning bush and he finally reached it and God spoke to him. Through that burning bush, that was the divine appointment. If, and it's, and I put in my announcements, that was the ultimate divine appointment because if that never happened, he would have never led God's people out of bondage. So think about it. If God never appeared to Moses with that divine appointment, which automatically would have happened no matter what, but if God never did, think about it, Moses would not have delivered God's people out of bondage. That divine appointment had to happen. So when I say divine appointment has to happen, it has to happen. Because you, it's just like uh, Noah in the whale. When you don't do what God's asking you to do, he'll swallow you up in some kind of a whale like Jonah. And then you'll be stuck there until you say, okay, God, let's do this. So don't be sucked up in a whale. Because of your disobedience to doing what God wants you to do. So, with divine appointment though, is that you have no recollection. Moses didn't have recollection that God was going to be speaking to him. God never said to him, right, you know, two weeks later before, Yeah, Moses, I'm going to speak to you in the burning bush over there on, on Mount Horeb, the, the mountain of God. I'm going to speak to you there. No. It was divine appointment to where God never, he, God had to, make that burning bush appear to burn without being consumed. And that's when Moses got got uh, curious and kept hearing God say, Moses, Moses. And then Moses had was so curious about what was going on, he had to go see what was going on. When he did, that's when God spoke to Moses and he said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to bring the Egyptians. Oh, no, I'm going to use you to bring the Israelites out of bondage. So that divine appointment had to happen for God to use him to get the Israelites out of bondage. If he did not, those the Israelites would not have been out of bondage at that moment because that divine appointment had to happen. And it happened no matter what. It would have happened. But I'm saying if it did not, for any reason, if any divine appointment does not happen that God speaks to you, you're going to be in some trouble with yourself, number one. Number two, that... Yes, God will use somebody else to bring that divine appointment, but if he wanted you to do it, there's a reason why. And so there's a reason why. But like when Paul and Silas were in jail, there's a reason why God led them to there, and they didn't know it. It wasn't something that was on. God didn't say, you're going to go to, to Greece and you're going to preach to a jail inmate, uh, no, a jail a jail prisoner guard, and you're going to be in jail, and you're going to this, and you're going to that, you're going to sing to me. no. They just started singing while they're in jail. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know why they were going there. But the steps of a righteous man were ordered by God at that moment. Just like Moses, the steps of a good man, Moses, was ordered by God. God ordered his his steps to walk to the mountain of God, the mountain of Horeb, to speak with God Almighty himself. And he says, my name is I Am sent you. So, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So God ordered all their steps. Moses and the two, Paul and Silas were in jail. He ordered their steps. And they fulfilled what God's promise was for them. So with that being said, when God gives you a... When God gives you a word for somebody, a word of divine appointment... Don't sit there and say, well, this, that, or the other. Just say, okay, God, thank you. I accept it. Let's do it. Because if you don't, that div- like like John the Will, that divine appointment that you throw out that window going, whoop, nope, I'm not doing it, God. They're not going to listen to me. He's going to suck you up in his own whale. And you don't want that. You don't want to be in the belly of whatever filth that you're going to be sitting in. Think about it. He's saying murky filth. 
Can you imagine smelling the inside of a whale? Ooh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> so with that being said, but with divine appointment, it's it's basically you're at the right place at the right time. Just like I said with the grocery store example, when you're in this line and you're the 10th person in line, you win a $1,000 shopping spree at that store. That's the right place at the right time. So with that being said, for divine appointment to happen, it's not just they have to be somewhere, but you have to be at the right place at the right time. And God will direct you and direct that person to meet each other. So with that divine appointment, like my church used to say at Evangel, it says, we don't call it just happenstance that you're here. We call it divine appointment. God called you here for a reason. And so when God calls you somewhere, don't say, well, just do it. It's like if we never went to go do our laundry that night, this would never have happened. See what I'm saying? So with that being said, when you feel that God's calling you somewhere, first thing you do is, Lord, if that's you, show me again. And if he shows you right then and there, you better pack your bags and leave. Now, if he doesn't show you right then and there, that's fine. Keep asking, Lord, if this is you, show me. If this is not, then it causes it to dry up. And you keep saying that. And one day when the Lord finally shows you, then you go. If he doesn't, then you know it's not God talking to you. But when you feel led somewhere, always ask God what this is, where it is, and what he wants you to do there. And then, Lord, if this is you, show me. If this is not you, then let it dry up. That way, you don't give the devil reign authority over anything. And you also, devil, you behind me in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. That way, once you ask the Lord to show you if it's him or to let it dry up if it's not, that way the devil has no reign authority over anything in that area. Because the devil can come as an angel of light. Believe me. He can come as an angel of light. And then when you think it's God, and he comes to you thinking, making you think it's God, yes. I'm talking softly to you. And you need to go over there and blah, 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 blah. And it sounds good. It sounds Christian. It sounds lovely. And the next thing you know, you're in trouble with God. Because he twisted it just enough to make it sound plausible. So with that being said, if it's of God, do it. Because you never know when divine appointments going to happen. Hey, God, if this is you, show me. If it's not you, then let it dry up. So that being said, divine appointment is something that you have no recollection over. You do not know what's going to happen. All you, you don't even know anything about what divine appointment is. You just know that God is leading you somewhere for whatever reason. And if that's the case, just like Paul and Silas or Moses, do it. Because both of them were curious about what was going on and why they needed to go in that direction. So with that being said, that is our message for today. And I hope you guys got something out of that. I sure did, as I tried looking up scriptures for it last night. So with that being said, let's get into another song, shall we? Let's do Lord Will Worship You by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy Lord Will Worship You. Sing. 